I'm Supergirl. You're who now? So the CW Supergirl has just started its final season and I got a lot of things to say. Now, okay, Supergirl is a bad show. I'm aware that I'm not really teaching anything to anyone here, but I do want to talk about why this show doesn't work, at least for me, because I know a lot of people are just frustrated at how mediocre it is. And I agree, don't get me wrong, but for me, it's more disappointing than anything else. That's right, I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed. And the reason why I'm disappointed is because Supergirl is one of the shows with the biggest amount of of wasted potential I have ever seen. And it actively ruins one of my favorite comic book characters and everybody thinks she's really lame now, which sucks. I absolutely love Supergirl in the comics for reasons that I'll explain a little later. And that is why this show breaks my heart a little because the CW ruins everything. The show has been on for six seasons now. It initially started its run in 2015 on CBS, but then CBS canceled the show because people weren't watching it. So the CW was like, oh, you have a show with terrible ratings? Well, give it to us, that's kind of our specialty. So season two aired on the CW and it's been like that ever since. Supergirl is part of the Arrowverse or the television universe of DC Comics that was started with the show Arrow back in 2012. The Arrowverse used to be pretty popular, especially with the arrival of The Flash in 2014. But nowadays, I feel like people don't really care about the Arrowverse all that much. The reason why is because when it comes to superheroes on television, I think the Arrowverse was as popular as it was for the sole reason that it had no competition at the time. But now, they can't really hold a candle to the other shows in the genre. They are so far behind in terms of quality. But it did pioneer the initial standard for superhero media on television. They accomplished quite a lot and it's generally celebrated with the yearly tradition of the Arrowverse crossovers, where all the shows combine for a week or two to make one big storyline with all the characters together. They even link the movie universe to the Arrowverse thanks to one of those, with Ezra Miller's Flash meeting Grant Gustin's Flash in the Crisis of Infinite Earths crossover. But the big problem with the Arrowverse is that, well, it's on the CW, and the CW is known for its terrible writing and the overall poor quality of their shows. And unfortunately, Supergirl is kind of the biggest victim of that trend. So for the uninitiated, let me give you a quick breakdown of the show. Supergirl is the story of Kara Zor-El, the older cousin of Kal-El, who you probably know as Superman, or Clark Kent. You choose, I'm not your mom. When she was a little girl, Kara was sent to Earth from her dying home planet of Krypton on the same day as Clark, who was a baby at the time. She was meant to take care of him and protect him, but her spaceship got knocked off course and she found herself stuck in the Phantom Zone, an area of space where time is not a thing. This is really long, I'm gonna speed this up. Long story short, when she finally arrives on Earth, she's actually 24 years late, and while she hasn't age at all and she's still a kid, her cousin Kal-El is now an adult and is already known to the world as the Superman. Fast forward another 12 years in the future, Kara is now an adult living a seemingly normal life as a human in National City, but everything changes when her adoptive sister Alex goes on a plane that malfunctions, so Kara reveals herself to the world to save the plane from crashing and she becomes Supergirl. <sighs> that was a lot. And it's not even that interesting. Now, how can I put this? I think the simplest way I have to sum up the show would be this. The CW Supergirl is to Supergirl what The Last Airbender is to Avatar The Last Airbender. Does that make sense? It made sense in my head. This show is horrible. It completely shits on the mythology of the character. It has absolutely no respect for the source material and very little understanding of the characters it's adapting on screen. I mean, it is a CW show, so no one is surprised, I guess, but it still bothers me personally. And it's not to say that there isn't anything to like about Supergirl, there are some positive things in there. I really like Melissa Benoist as Supergirl and, well, no, that's it, that's the only thing. I think I'll just start by saying that the one thing that doesn't work with this show for me is the simple fact that this Supergirl is not Supergirl, she's a female Superman. Let me explain. This is one of the things that annoy me the most with this show. The CW's interpretation of Supergirl is just a very lame copy of Clark Kent and it doesn't work. They literally just made a less interesting version of Clark and then made it a girl and called her Supergirl. And it pisses me off for a very specific reason. And that is where I need to bring up comic book Supergirl. You see, in the comics, Supergirl and Superman are two very different people. Supergirl as a character is kind of dark 
dark, and she can be very cold. She has a different philosophy than Superman, she has a different personality than Superman, and they disagree on a lot of shit. She's also known to have a bit of a temper, like she's definitely not as nice as Clark, and she's way more of a brute than he is. She likes to fight, she's a warrior, she was trained in combat by the military of Krypton growing up, she's always eager to punch things. She's a no talk, no bullshit kind of person, she's all action. Like if Superman faces you, he will always give you a chance to surrender before fighting. He will always try to reason with you before he jumps into a fight. Supergirl is not like that. She will smash your face into a concrete wall first and then maybe she'll say hello if she's in a good mood. But the one thing that makes Supergirl such an amazing character in the comics, which is completely ignored in the show, it's her complicated relationship with humans. In the comics, Supergirl is a little bit of an outsider, like she's kind of a weirdo. Clark has lived his entire life on Earth, so even though he has his challenges, living here is not as much of a struggle. Because he's human at heart, he was raised by humans. But Kara grew up on Krypton, she wasn't raised on Earth, and adapting to this civilization is a very different experience for her, and not an easy one. She has a very hard time relating to humans, and as a result, she has a tendency to isolate herself from everyone. She's kind of a loner, really, and because she didn't grow up on Earth, she also doesn't have the same blind love and dedication to humanity that Clark has. As a superhero, Supergirl experiences way more internal conflict than Superman. She understands that life is worth preserving, but at times she sort of doubts humanity deserves to be saved at all. There are even times of crisis where she tells people straight up that saving humans is not her priority, she'd rather just neutralize the threat. It's difficult for Kara to understand the fundamental implications of being human, and she doesn't necessarily like humans as a people. She questions their values all the time, and it really affects her life on the planet. At her core, she's homesick. She doesn't feel at home on Earth. She doesn't feel like she belongs. But at the same time, she doesn't really belong anywhere, because her home planet was destroyed. So a part of her wants to believe she can find her place on Earth, like Clark did. But the problem here is that, well, Kara doesn't have the same notion of time as Clark does. When she arrives on Earth, over two decades have gone by, but because she was stuck in the Phantom Zone, to her it's only been three days. And now she's being told that her home planet was destroyed. Everyone she's ever known, everything she's ever known is now gone, it doesn't exist anymore. So Kara is consumed by grief, and her mental health is very unstable because of it, so it's very hard for her to even attempt to find comfort on Earth. But also, like I said, Supergirl doesn't believe in mankind. She doesn't see the beauty in it that Clark sees in every little thing. There are some moments where she struggles so much to live amongst humans that she just leaves to find people she can relate to more. She spends time on Themyscira with Wonder Woman and the Amazons, and she also quits on Earth altogether at some point and just leaves to hang out in space. Kara has a lot of rage and pain inside of her that she constantly feels the need to repress and push down, so much so that when she fights Lobo and unleashes her rage after being taunted for too long, the power of her anger is so overwhelming that it it attracts a red lantern ring and she becomes a red lantern, driven mad by the power of rage and vengeance due to her feelings of isolation and grief. I mean hell, it takes her a while before she even creates a secret identity for herself. It's only a couple of years after arriving on Earth and many intergalactic battles in between that she decides to settle down and try to adapt to the planet. And all of that conflict within her is what makes her one of my favorite comic book characters. Supergirl is not just a female Superman, she's her own character with a very different psyche. She's so much more complex than she appears to be, and she's definitely more layered as a character than whatever it is the CW did with her. Even the cartoons and the video games have a much deeper understanding of the character than the show. The CW Supergirl has none of the edge, none of the conflict, none of the complexity that makes Supergirl so unique. Instead of all of that, the CW turns Supergirl into this generic goody two-shoes with very little personality. Like this version of Kara is essentially any quirky white girl from any cliche American romantic comedy, but also she can fly and she has a cape, I guess. <laughs> Gosh, hi. <laughs> I, yeah. She's just a really boring character. She has no charisma. She's by far the most boring part of her own show. And I think it's too bad that they didn't actually try to adapt the character from the comics because like I said, Melissa Benoist who plays Supergirl is actually really fucking good in the role. Like she's a good actress, but the writers never really gave her a chance to show it here. Loki, I wish HBO Max would just give her another Supergirl show with better writing. She has her moments in the crossover episodes, I guess, but even there she's limited by her quirky 
CW personality, and most of her dialogue in this show is composed of the laziest one-liners you've ever heard. General! You care to step outside? Jesus. Usually when Kara gets to have a bit of emotional vulnerability as a character, which is important with Supergirl, it's linked to whatever man she's in love with. Because CW shows don't know how to function without lame romance plots, and I'm not kidding when I say that Supergirl has some of the worst romantic storylines I have ever seen in a TV show. The first season miserably tries to force a relationship between her and Jimmy Olsen, and they have no chemistry, and they're so boring, it's just awful. Awful. Honestly, I fundamentally disagree with every decision the writers have made with this show. Except maybe for the character of Alex Denvers. She's Kara's adoptive sister and she didn't exist in the comics. She was created just for the show and Kyler Lee brings something to the character that's very interesting but again limited by the CW's inability to create character development. And it's not even that I'm against the idea of changing a character from the source material. Arrow completely changed the character of Oliver Queen, taking inspiration from the Christopher Nolan Batman films instead of the comic book version of the Green Arrow, who tends to be more lighthearted and comedic. But that worked! Marvel also completely reinvented the character of Jessica Jones for the Netflix series, giving her a much darker tone that completely shifted her circumstances and it made her one of my favorite characters in the universe. They also completely reinvented Thor, because believe me, in the comics, Thor is not the comedic character you know from Thor Ragnarok. He's a friend from work! Shifting from the source material is fine if it has a point. But in the case of Supergirl, it doesn't work because every change made with the character was a significant downgrade that took away every single aspect of her that was interesting and it made her unbelievably bland. She also just sucks as a superhero in this show. Like the badass factor of it. Every time I stumble across an episode of Supergirl or a random scene on YouTube, she's getting her ass kicked by some person. Like she's always getting beat up and I kinda hate it. <laughs> She's fucking Kara Zor-El, the Supergirl, the last daughter of Krypton. Kara is a god-level being, a fucking beast of a warrior who should be almost unstoppable. But in the show, there doesn't seem to be a single episode where she's not getting absolutely bodied by some random creature and even by humans. She's a terrible superhero, and it's made even worse by the fact that Supergirl has the worst action sequences of any superhero show probably ever. Like the fight scenes in this show are so unexciting that they have now become memes online. It's that bad. Are you guys still awake? And look, I know that at this point, criticizing the CW is just beating on a dead horse. Like in general pop culture, the CW has become the gold standard for mediocre TV. Every time I see a bad trailer for a TV show on YouTube, the comments will always say, wow, it looks like a CW show. And the worst part is, when someone says that, everybody knows what that means. That's so embarrassing. And from what I understand, when it comes to how the people behind Supergirl and the actors speak of the show, it looks Looks like this version of Supergirl was specifically made for young girls, like children I mean. Which is fine, but even within this context, Supergirl is still objectively bad. Like Totally Spies was made for young girls and that shit was fucking insane. But Supergirl is awful in every possible way, even the dialogue is painful to listen to. You have a problem. 99, but you ain't one. Oh my god. But what I think bothers me the most about it is that this show is not really interested in being good. I know it sounds weird said like that, but hear me out. Supergirl is a show that has for ultimate priority to consistently shove socio-political messages down your throat. But to a degree that is just weird. And it's not even that I disagree with the idea of a show having a message. Hell, I agree with most of the messages Supergirl tries to convey. Believe it or not, as a black man who lives in North America, America, I too believe that racism is bad. But the show is just so excessive with it that it still makes me roll my eyes every time. It doesn't even try to be subtle or smart or to integrate those messages with the story in a way that makes sense. And it's just so in your face that it's kind of hard to just enjoy what you're watching because it all comes across as very condescending. The universe is vast. They come from outer space. They take our jobs. What the fuck? 
And I know I'm not alone in this because an overwhelming majority of reaction channels on YouTube that made Supergirl reaction videos have stopped and they all pretty much explained that the show had become so heavy with the politics that regardless of if they agree with those messages or not, it just wasn't a fun show to watch anymore. And it's not difficult to see why. Because the hashtag woke element of Supergirl is never done in a way that feels clever or educational. It often just comes across as the show talking down to the audience, like it's treating people like brainless idiots. Like the writers don't really know how to make a point, so their way of doing it is just to have characters repeat something a hundred million times throughout an episode. And that's their definition of social commentary. Nothing says covert operation like a flying woman in a red skirt. They Supergirl? We can't name her that. Shouldn't she be called Super Woman? Can you believe it? A female hero. Nice for my daughter to have someone like that to look up to. You want to help? Go back to getting someone's coffee. On my planet, females bow before males. This is not your planet. She's not strong enough. Why? Because she's just a girl? exactly what we were counting on. Do you get it? Did you guys get the message? It's literally the opposite of clever writing. It's so poorly done, it's impossible not to roll your eyes at it. And it's not impossible to do it right. The Boys is a superhero show that is full of political messages, but the writers also understand that it's a TV show and that the story and the characters should probably come first. The second season especially has a very heavy theme of female empowerment, and ironically enough, it executes its idea perfectly well using the message as a way to further character development, and not only is the message clear and appreciated and enjoyable, but the show also manages to get it across while making fun of the way media like Supergirl handle those messages in a way that is very manipulative and devoid of any intelligence or respect for the audience. But how are you gonna get through all of them? Don't worry. Girls get it done. And Cut a rehearsal, no one move, no one move. Jessica Jones is the same. The first season of Jessica Jones is quite literally a message about trauma, sexual assault, and how women are affected by it in society. When you meet Jessica, she's still dealing with trauma from terrifying experiences she never quite recovered from mentally. And the show does a fantastic job at balancing that theme within a world of super-powered beings. But it works because these shows put the story first and integrate the message seamlessly. Supergirl puts the message first and tries to force a story in it and it doesn't work. It's so condescending and tacky, like it reminds me of how 13 Reasons Why tried to portray their messages about mental health. It really thinks it's clever, but no one else seems to think that. And it's all made very awkward by the fact that Supergirl is also quite hypocritical when it comes to its values. Like it preaches a lot of things and condemns a lot of behaviors that the show itself exhibits on the regular. It's kind of weird. I had a one night stand. Did. Kara, it's horrible. No. I'm terrible. It's like, it's such a guy thing to do. I am a horrible, terrible guy. I'm sorry, I have difficulty making conversation with men under six feet tall. Oh, so let me get this straight. The super woke show that claims to be against sexism is also full of sexist values where women just freely body shame men and slut shame themselves? It's not just me, right? Tell me it's not just me. I also hate how the writers seem to have zero confidence in Kara being a woman. Let me explain what I mean. Now, yes, I know there are already memes online about how the show constantly needs to remind you out loud that Kara is a girl as if we can't see it, but that's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about how the writers feel like the only way they have to validate Supergirl as a hero is by comparing her to Superman. Now, don't get me wrong, in the beginning, it sort of makes sense because we're following her first steps as a superhero. But then the show gets so weird about it that it's almost funny how insecure the writers seem to be about their own character. In the first few seasons, Kara is never allowed to have a victory without someone comparing her to Clark. Every time she does something cool, the writers have to ruin it by having a character swoop in to tell her that even Superman could not accomplish what she just did. Even worse, in the season 2 finale, Kara actually fights Superman and she beats him. But then the writers are too insecure to just let Kara have that victory, so they have Superman tell everyone out loud that he was at full power and he did not hold back and Kara beat him because she is better than him. And because they're that insecure, they have him say it twice. It didn't weaken me at all. It might have. No. No, I was at full strength and you beat me. But Kara just defeated me. 
She's the champion of Earth. I'm humbled by you. You are so much stronger than me. Stronger than I ever will be. The world doesn't need Superman if it has Supergirl. Okay, we get it! Jesus! The show is so insecure about Kara, and it pisses me off because we all know Supergirl is awesome. Why do you need to do this? I'm sorry, but I find it incredibly weird that a show that prides itself on being feminist and empowering is so obsessed with comparing its female hero to her male counterpart to give her value. Because what you're saying is that the only worth Kara gets to have as a woman is defined by the competence of her male peers and that's so dumb and I find it even weirder that the writers have no idea how to elevate Kara as a character without putting down Superman it goes against everything their dynamic is in the comics and I hate it Clark and Kara in the comics are never like in a competition they're never pit against each other to represent men and women and juke it out to try and show which one of them is better that's so stupid and lazy Kara is her own fucking person she has her own sense of worth and her own identity. Stop doing this to her. This character deserves so much better. Melissa Benoist in this role deserved so much better. I love the Supergirl character so much. It genuinely pains me that the writing on this show is so shamelessly bad. Like it's almost insulting to the audience's intelligence and I can give you the perfect example of what I mean. I think it's time for me to tell you about the episode that made me quit on Supergirl. And that episode is called Triggers. Triggers aired on October 16, 2017. It's the second episode of Supergirl's third season, and a part of the plot in this episode deals with Kara suffering from panic attacks. There's other stuff happening in the episode, but that's the plot line I'm gonna focus on here. So in this episode, there's a scene where Kara is at work, and she has a panic attack in an elevator. She can't breathe properly, everything is shaky, she's struggling to talk, and she's stuck in a confined space, which is never good in these types of situations. So, in her panic, Kara reverts back to her instincts and to escape the situation, she flies through the building to reach the sky and breathe. Like she literally destroys the elevator and several floors of the building, including the roof to get herself out of there. And when I tell you that I lost my mind when I saw this, you need to know I'm not kidding. I was so excited. I was like, this is so fucking cool. The show is stepping the fuck up. Shit is about to get real. Because now there's no way she gets out of this. Everybody's gonna know who she is. She bolted through the Catco building like a rocket and destroyed it. There's literally millions of dollars worth of damage on the building. There are cameras there. People probably got hurt by things collapsing or electrical damage. Like, she's so fucked. There's no way she's getting out of it. It's game over. Everything's gonna change, right? Right? Well, no, I was wrong. I mean, shame on me for thinking the writers could have the decency of treating us with a little respect. The fact that Kara flew through a building, which also happens to be her workplace, is never mentioned again. In fact, later that episode, Kara goes back to work and everything is fine? Nothing is destroyed, no one noticed. It's magically as if nothing happened. It's business as usual at Catco. And that is the very moment I stopped watching the show. The writers literally just had a cool idea for that one moment where Kara flies out of the elevator, but they're so incompetent and lazy and they care so little about the audience or the story they're writing that they just decided they wouldn't deal with the consequences of that gigantic action. So everything is just reset like a fucking video game and the show never acknowledges what happened. Either that or they just forgot and honestly I don't know which one is worse. Do you believe me now when I say this show is insulting to the audience's intelligence? Because this isn't just bad writing, this is a whole new level of not giving a fuck. And I think this scene alone perfectly encapsulates why the CW has become the ultimate standard for mediocrity in pop culture. I mean, there's also this thing, but we'll talk about that another time. All in all, the wasted potential of Supergirl is infuriating to me. She's such a cool character with themes that are so important to address, especially now. A lot of her character is about grief, mental health, isolation, and loneliness, trying to find a place in the world, understanding what it means to be human. In the right hand, Supergirl could have been one of the best comic book adaptations of all time, with themes explored in unique ways, just like in the comics. But instead, 
we got romantic comedy Supergirl, who has close to no personality and has for only emotional struggle her very boring relationships with whatever men she's in love with. Literally, the final villain of season 2 is the mother of her boyfriend who is mad that they're dating, so she wants to destroy Earth because she's mad that they're dating. That's literally the plot, I'm not kidding. I tried to get back into the show over the years, but I find it very difficult to sit through a single episode now. Like, it's that bad. It's just very cringe to watch. And for some reason, starting in season four, Supergirl becomes the Lex Luthor show. And I really don't like John Cryer's Lex Luthor. I'd say I'm more than alright. He's like this very uninteresting and whiny cartoon villain instead of the menacing mastermind from the comics. And then I watched the trailer for season 6 and he's still there. God damn it! I was also excited to hear that Brainiac 5 was going to be brought into the show because he's a very strange and out there character in the comics. But then I remember this is the CW Supergirl we're talking about and this is the Brainiac 5 we ended up getting. Fuck this show, I'm done with this video. So bottom line, the CW Supergirl is really bad and now everyone thinks that Supergirl is really lame and that makes me sad because she's actually a really cool character. The writing is awful, the show looks awful, and I don't know, it's just horrible. Apparently we're gonna get a new Supergirl in the movie. Sasha Cal was cast in the role and from what I understand, it's gonna be a very different take on the character. So that brings me joy because I genuinely don't think you could do worse than a CW's adaptation. I'm glad the show is ending this year, we need to move on. Now go read The Last Daughter of Krypton. It's a really good comic book.